Welcome to another video by Lane Creations, Log Analysis Made Easy. And I'm setting these uh, set of videos uh, as kind of pre preparation for an interview, a nice refresher on some of the uh, .conf, the configuration file settings, and what I would consider to be some of the most valuable things. This is clearly up for discussion. By all means, comment down below. Write down your favorite stanzas and settings in each of these. Today we're going to cover the apps.conf and we're going to co cover the limits.conf. The things I'm going to cover are just a subset of everything that's in there. It's just the stuff that I've run into and I've used the most. And I did not want to turn this into let's go through the docs and read every stanza and talk about what each one of those are. If you want to get into everything that you can do in those stanzas, boy, this video would bloat in size. And if that's what people want, I'll do it. But for me, I'm trying to make things simple. So this is kind of that uh, real quick Reader's Digest, quick version of uh, what to do. Apps.conf, first place. Generally, I don't play around with apps.conf, but there is a certain place and time when you're building custom apps, you're gonna play with it, and when you are, there are certain things like, I'm gonna call it old man syndrome. For the longest time, this app, this one drives me nuts. Splunk app for lookup file editing. It used to be for the longest time, lookup editor. And so my brain just does, I'm getting old, I don't want to find something new, and I'll come look around, I'll be like, look up editor, look up editor, where is it, where is it? And then I'll be looking, all right, okay, it's not called look up editor, what is it called? And it doesn't matter, for some reason, my brain, my eyes, I cannot see this app. This Splunk app for lookup file, I never see it in a, in a list. And so when it's dropped down here, I miss it. And it just, I don't know what it is, I can't do it. So one of the things I like, I'm going to come in here. I am in the directory, op, Splunk, Etsy, lookup, editor, default. Let's go to that, which by the way, if you notice, Splunk didn't even bother to change the name of the app. It's still called lookup editor, but the visualization that you get has changed. And so I'm going to be, we're going to go look at apps, lookup editor, and the default stanza here. We're going to go viapp.conf. And this is actually a really good example of what you're going to typically find. You're going to have some builds here. This is basically going to, uh, you don't even, you won't need to play with this. This can pretty much be done, will be auto done. But there's some settings here to set it. You want to make sure they don't conflict. You want to make sure that your version, each time you, if you're using Splunk base and you push your stuff up to Splunk base, you're going to need to make sure that you increase your version. You can install the same version twice upload the same version to Splunk. It'll want you to uh, uh, tick that up. Um, you can put in here who's the author. Here's a nice little description. And then this package, this is pretty much going to match the uh, name of the directory. And then here, user, UI. These are the two settings I change the most unless I'm publishing apps to Splunk base, in which I might change here my versions. It's this uh, is visible. If there is no reason for the user to see the app, you can change is visible to false or true. You can do that in Splunk. I'll show that in the GUI but, uh, uh, where that's changed. But typically TAs, the things that change props and com uh, props and make your files, your edit parsing of your logs, those don't typically need to be visible to the user if you have an app that's just setting up that parsing. So you would typically turn them invisible. If you want them to be able to see the stuff and you have dashboards and things like that, you set the status to true. The other one is a label. And here's where that Splunk app for lookup file setting is. I don't like this. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to co copy this stanza. Copy. I'm going to quit. Go to local. And I don't know if there is a local. Make der local. Okay. Viapp.conf. And now I'm just going to paste this in with an insert. Paste. Because of precedence, I don't need this. I'm not changing the visibility status. I'm going to change the la label here. I like lookup editor. It's just easier for me. Look up editor. I'm going to save that WQ. And now I will just. All right. One of the things I did, I screwed up. I did a vi in <laughs> right in the root. So let's move app.conf to local. Now let's do a debug refresh.
All right, now I can hit refresh here. And hopefully, I should find Splunk app for lookup file editing changed. And look at that, now I have a lookup editor. It's back to what I feel warm and cozy with. All right, limits.conf. I'm gonna bring up the uh, Splunk doc for it. That's always a good recommendation if you wanna understand how the doc it works is go to docs.splunk and look them up. But the biggest one I've seen, this is the inputs dot, the, sorry, limits.conf. The biggest setting I find is this max KB uh, PS, kilobytes per second. And by default, Splunk sets it to, on, on universal forwarders as 256. There is some places where that's what you, that's about all you want to take up on the network bandwidth. But as a general, a lot of these universal forwarders, they can handle a lot larger. And funny, like Splunk Enterprise, it's got a zero, meaning unlimited. It'll send as much as it can through. Um, my, set, my recommendation is if you need to be able to, you'll want to know this setting in your limits.com. There are plenty of other things, but this is the place I spend the most time changing. But let's go over real quickly some of these up here. I said I'm not going to go through all of them. But global settings, um, max memory usage, you can set how much memory you're going to use on your Splunk instance. There are some, a few things here, compression max result. Um, I'm looking for, like subsearch here, how long can a subsearch run? So by default, number of results from a subsearch. If you're not aware, subsearches don't always return all the values, and so they can be misleading. I have videos on that, but the point is, uh, by default, it will only return 10,000 results, and that's the setting here. And it says don't raise it better, higher than 10,500. How long will the search run? There's some max time there. There's also some settings in here to set concurrency. How many um, CPUs? Yeah, right here. Back uh, it's all in this concurrency section, base max searches, total search max concern, concurrency level. This is about how many concurrent searches can be run, how many C searches can be run per CPU, how many real-time uh, searches can be run. So some of that settings, that's all here in the limits.conf. You want to know exactly how to play with them, come read the documentation. Uh, but anyway, so that's app.conf, primarily app.conf, you're going to be changing whether an app is visible or not. You'll be changing its name, and if you're uploading it, keeping control of version control and stuff like that. If you are, then the limits.conf, the throughput section, that's something you'll want to pay attention to on your universal forwarders, and concurrency, and that's about how many searches are allowed, how many searches per CPU, things like that. There are a lot more settings than that, but again, I'm not going to go through every one of these. I'm just going to tell you when I do interviews and when I talk to people, these are the most important things, and that helps you understand what you're going to be finding in each of these. Anyway, I hope this helps move you from being a lame analyst to a Splunk Ninja, and that you keep coming back to these videos. We're going to keep coming covering all these comp files in the video playlist below. Additionally, I, I encourage you, please help support this channel by becoming a member. Um, it's not a lot, but it helps me be able to uh, uh, afford the, the hardware and the stuff that I'm trying to do to keep this system running. I want to be able to move this stuff out to the cloud and put other technologies in here. And your support helps make this channel grow. It's truly appreciated. So if you want to if you want to help me make this channel more successful and provide more capabilities, join the channel. Uh, but by all means, like, subscribe, keep coming back. Uh, I am Hey, uh, copy down below your favorite stanza and settings for uh, limits or app.conf. And if you have any recommendations for things you want me to cover, put that down below as well. Join my Discord. Anyway, hope you keep coming back and chat with you later.